So my name is Peter Cousins, and the teachers here know me, but those that watch the recording may not. And so I'm superintendent of education for the state of Indiana. I spent um, 13 years uh, as a teaching principal in a junior in two different junior academies, Indianapolis Junior Academy, where Mrs. B is, and in Tri-City Christian Academy in the Carolina Conference. And uh, that school eventually became uh, Full Day Academy after five years of being there. So uh, I'm pulling on the experience from that, and I'm, I'm going to try to share with you a little bit about school boards and incorporating into that uh, home and school and um, following that. So school boards have personality. That's one of the things that you need to learn as you work with different school boards. Some school boards are laid back. Some school boards are take the lead and you're, you're trying to keep up with them. Um, some school boards will have no idea what you're doing, <laughs> and they're happy in that space. And um, some school boards, uh, you know, they, they will think they know what you're doing, but they may or may not. So you've got all these different personalities of school boards as you work with your school boards. You know, um, that can change in your location, depending on how many different churches you have. My The personality of the school board I had at Tri-City, there were five constituent churches, and it would change as people came and went on the school board. And so um, I'm at Cross Street, and Lisa just popped in, FYI. So she's closing the door. See ya. I wanted to share this with you. Who do you work for? When I was at Tri-City, there was uh, one of our board members was a, was a f retired fire marshal for the city of High Point, which was one of our churches. And he was very much like to be in control. And we were changing the, the, the structure of how locally funded employees were paid. And the treasurer and I had worked on it and we didn't really have a good solid number. And he was getting frustrated. And after the meeting, he came up to me and he said, if you worked for me, I would fire you. And his name was Max. And I said, Max, if I worked for you, you would not have to fire me. <laughs> so who do you work for? You know, you, you have to realize that you don't really work for the school board in a sense. You work with the school board. And you guys, you, you as a principal and your school board are partnering together to do the best you can do to lead children to Christ. And so when you're working with your school boards, you have to remember that you're working together. It's a partnership. You wanna do the best you can to foster that relationship um, with your school board. Now, um, what I'm noticing is this isn't, <laughs> uh, we're gonna go with it. This is not the presentation I had, but best practices, <clears throat> I had updated this and it didn't save correctly. So one of the things you need to do with your school board is you need to get on God's agenda. Is sometimes it's really difficult, and I and what I'm sharing this about getting on God's agenda. There's a book, Spiritual Leadership, that really highlights this idea. You know, sometimes you can want to do good things, like King David wanted to build the temple, which was a good thing. We read in our Sabbath school lesson this last week, Peter. Uh, there at the transfiguration, he wanted to build a temple uh, for Moses and Elijah, which is a good thing, but it's not a God thing. And sometimes if we're not careful, we can get caught up doing good things that might not be on God's agenda. And it's really difficult sometimes to know the difference. And the reality is the only way to know the difference is by prayer. I remember when I first got to Tri-City, um, you know, I, I needed to know, Lord, I was praying, God, what is what is my mission here? What what do you want me to accomplish here through me, through the board? What, what do we need to do? And I had had conversations with the school board chair. I'd had conversations with parents and students. And, you know, they had been talking about building a new school for 10 years. And I remember I was, I was driving into school. I was at a stoplight. I can still see it in my mind. Praying, God, what do you want me to do? What, what direction do you want us to go? in like a like a an impression not a, i didn't hear it but an impression it god said build my school and brian hall will help you 
that's what it, that was the impression I had. Now, Brian Hall was somebody who had not been very involved in the school, but was starting to come back to the school. And I can tell you five years later, that's exactly what happened. Brian Hall came onto the, and became our, our chair of our um, building committee, brought us, brought a, a, a sense of professionalism, brought together a team and God just put all the right pieces together. It wasn't any one person, but God brought the right team together. And once we had the right agenda, God's agenda, things just flowed, things just happened. So you've got to, you've got to prayerfully find your way onto God's agenda for your school. You have to cast the vision as the leader and you have to prayerfully ask God to give you that vision uh, for the school and he will and uh, then doors will open <laughs> things will things will happen um, that you never thought would be possible another best practice at your school and what we're talking about is building these relationships building trust building um, respect between you and your board you need to be visible at your churches and you need to be visible as a spiritual leader. It's not enough just to be there. You have to somehow find your niche as a spiritual leader. And that can be a million different things. There's no one set thing that you can do to do that. <clears throat> I had five churches at the last school I was at. I had to visit all five churches. I would go and preach at the church where I had my membership. Excuse me. I taught adult Sabbath school because I love doing that. And I still teach adult Sabbath school, just love doing that. But you find some way to be visible and to be a spiritual leader in your church. Uh, and that will go a long way. Um, it's also a good best practice to have regular pre board meetings uh, with your board chair, uh, maybe a week before the, the board meeting. You don't want to get into a school board meeting and the board chair has no idea what you're talking about. You and your school board chair need to be on the same page and, and there needs to be no surprises between you. And your board chair will have your back and you need to have your board chair's back and you just, you just need to mesh as a team. Your treasurer also, it's good to meet before with your treasurer. Some of these meetings are, don't have to be formal meetings, these pre-board meetings. This could be a five minute conversation. This could be a uh, the, the board chair is picking up their kids at the school and I'm out uh, talking to them at the car. Just, hey, here are the three things we're looking at at the board meeting. The treasurer, you know, we 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 it, it might be more formal. It might not be so formal. It's also if there's some issue that's going to involve certain church members that belong to one of the pastor's churches, it's good to meet with the pastors before that board meeting and say, hey, you know, Johnny, there's a discipline issue coming up. I just want to give you a heads up what we're going to be talking about. And, and so your pastors are involved also. It's good to, to do that. Your home and school leader, home and school can be a big part of your, of your school. It is where your parents can have input and can help in the mission of the school. And so um, your home and school leader, boy, things rise and fall with your home and school leader on many, many points. I've had home and school leaders that were phenomenal and just things just clicked and we had great events and we had great uh, input from parents and we had great relationships and then other times uh, where that didn't work so well. I did find, and, and, and I, you know, you may find this, you may not, but I found that as, as both parents are working more and more, it's getting harder to find home and school leaders that can commit the time. And that is a challenge that you'll find out there. But if you get a good home and school leader, you will be blessed. We'll talk more about that in a second. And then whoever might be impacted by potential issues, if there's other board members that you might need to talk to ahead of time, it's just good to communicate before the board. Try not to give, try not to allow there to be any surprises for anybody on the board as best you can. Another best practice is, and your superintendents will tell you this, um, that you should not talk about your full-time teachers without the superintendent there. So there's a time to talk about your locally funded employees, your janitor, maybe somebody who works in the cafeteria part-time. You'll have a personnel committee. It, it's, a, it's an appropriate time for the board to talk about, but your board should not have conversations about your full-time teachers without the superintendent present to help guide that conversation if it needs to happen. 
And then know the financial limits of your board. I tell you what, you will gain a lot of respect from your school board if you understand and you know and you guard the financial limits of your churches. If they sense that you're doing the best you can to try not to overspend, to try to keep things within the limits of what they can do, you will gain a lot of respect from many of your board members. And you know, with that idea of respect, being on time, being prepared, all of these things will help build your relationship that you'll have with your school board when they see that you have that professional, that professional side. You know, things will be said about you as a leader. Uh, people will go to the board chair and say, man, Peter, what is he doing? Uh, da, 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 whatever. And if you've not had that professional relationship with your board where you're prepared, where you're on time, where you look professional, your board chairman might be like, yeah, I've noticed, you know, he may not say it, but he may think it. I've noticed in the board meetings, man, Peter's never ready. He's always 10 minutes late. Yeah, what you're saying is probably true about him. So these, these relationships that you build, these practical things that you can do can really strengthen those relationships and actually protect you and your um, reputation uh, with your board members as they work with you. They will gain respect by how you treat them. So board minutes are very important also. Uh, as a principal, you are the board secretary. And I always found it very difficult to be engaged in conversation and take minutes. And so I always try to delegate to somebody else because I don't want to be trying to write and remember what somebody said or remember how I need to write this and trying to do this. And this whole conversation is going on and I'm not a part of it. And so I would always find a secretary or a vice principal. Um, and one time it was the treasurer who was willing to do it because they, for some weird reason, which I still don't understand, they enjoy doing it. And uh, so I always try to delegate that when possible. Uh, to someone else. Uh, those minutes must be signed by the board chair and by the principal after they are approved. So you'll take your minutes, the following board meeting, you bring those minutes, they get voted and approved. Then the, the board chair and the principal sign those and you file those in some kind of a filing system that you have where you keep track of those minutes. These are the kind of things, documentations, by the way, when you get into your accreditation that you will love, that you've organized and kept track of, because you will use these in your accreditation visits. Um, hopefully, you don't have one for a while, but when you do, you'll want those. During the board meeting, I've always found it, uh, as a principle, if you can have lots of pictures and a few words if you need them. Because the people on the board, they like to see what they're putting all this time and money and effort into. And so when you come to your board, that's your time as a principal to really have pictures of the kids and something exciting that happened since the last board meeting and, and somewhere that you visited or something the kids did or kids work or just highlight a few things that um, really get the board members excited. When I was at Tri-City, the... the um, a couple of the people said the principal's part was the part they loved the most. And it wasn't because I was so dynamic. It was because I had so many pictures and they could see uh, what was happening. So please make a PowerPoint, take the time to do it, put a lot of pictures in there and this, your school board members will appreciate that effort. They'll appreciate seeing what's happened. You know, some of your members on your board, they don't have kids in the school. Uh, they may be uh, they may on, be on the board, but they have no no children at, in the school. And so they really don't have a sense of what happens in the day to day activities of the school. And so those pictures and and that time that you spend as a principal, giving them a sense and a feel of the culture and the activities that happen at your school is is very important. Communicate. When I was uh, taking some different seminar classes and this this is true, so true. And many of you who have been in leadership for a while can attest to this. You, When you communicate something, something happens at school, something needs, communication needs to go out, you communicate up and then out. What that means is the first person you call is probably gonna be your board chairman. Hey, we had a student run away at school today. You call your board chairman right away. The second person you wanna call as soon as you put the phone down is your superintendent. 
and you let your superintendent know, then then you're going to communicate <laughs> out to your parents because we had this happen when I was at Tri City. We had a, an eighth grader ran away. The police found her 20 minutes away in a mall, and so when parents were showing up to pick their kids up at school, there were five police cars sitting in our parking lot. There were two policemen with German shepherd dogs walking around smelling the property. So we needed to communicate what happened. You see what I'm saying? So you communicate up and then you communicate out and you communicate that so that um, everybody knows what happens, but it's a good communication practice to do that. Um, also, when you're communicating your board minutes, your board agenda, any supporting documents for the for the board meeting, the financials, which would be your balance sheet, your income statement, cash flow, you as a principal, you have to take ownership of this and you have to make sure all of these documents, I like to try to get things out a week ahead of time. So again, so that the board members are not surprised, they have time. Now, some of them will never look at it, but some of them will. You have those personality types that will read every single thing you send them. And so you send it out a week ahead of time when they come to the board meeting, people have already had time to look at the minutes, to look at the agenda, to look at the supporting documents and the financials. And it really helps your meeting go more smoothly and actually a little faster as you go. So coming back to home and school, the, the purpose of home and school is to unite the home, the school and the church in our endeavors to provide Seventh-day Adventist Christian education for our children. And we know that the work of redemption and the work of education are the same. So we're on the same page with the home, with the school and the church. And home and school is that opportunity for events, for them to plan events and do activities and that can help unify the school and the church and the families. And so there are a lot of activities that home and school will do. They'll, they may do a fall festival. They may, they may do um, an open house. They may have a, uh, a meeting time with the principal, uh, just a lot of different things that home and school can do to try to facilitate facilitate that. Now, one of the things um, it's important to do with home and school is to make sure that you also are on the same page. So I've got a picture here of this of this kiln that you know it cooks clay. This is what it's a weird thing to have for home and school, but I put it there to remember this story. We have, like I said, I've had home and school members. Uh, home and school leaders that were fantastic, are none. And I've had others where it was just a battle every day. It was almost, oh. So we were sitting in a board meeting and this this uh, lady who was our home and school leader, she says, she speaks up and she goes, oh, I, I, uh, I got a gift for the school and I have this new kiln that I was able to get and purchase and I'm donating it to the school. And so she had done all of that, raised money for it, paid for it, got it for the school. And that was the first time I had heard about it. So it was a nice gesture, but there were some practical issues with that. Number one, it was it needed gas. Um, it was a gas. It was one that ran on gas and we didn't have a gas hookup. <laughs> And the room, the art teacher that we had there, she didn't have room for it and she didn't want it. So now I'm in the middle of trying to accommodate uh, the uh, home and school good intentions of trying to give the school something and the art teacher that says, absolutely not, will that be in my art classroom? <laughs> and so I'm thrown in the middle. So it's very important to have, yeah, I've, I learned through that experience, I needed to be more proactive in communicating with the home and school leader to make sure that I knew what was going on and I could put input into what was going on and I can help guide and mold and direct the direction the home and school was going. But home and school, when done correctly, can be a powerful aid for your school and can benefit your parents and your students and your staff as far as that goes. So I'm winding down. I wanted to share some uh, resources for you guys. If you if you just do a search for NAD Adventist Education Resources, this website will come up. And then if you go to educators uh, up there on the, and then you go to handbooks or resources, then handbooks, all of these handbooks are here for you. You don't have to reinvent anything. You've got a handbook for principals. 
you've got a handbook for home and school association, and uh, you have a handbook for school boards. And so you can access those. I found it very healthy. These are at the covers of the of the manuals that they have there for you. I found it very good to give these what I would give if I had a new home and school leader, or even a returning home and school leader, I would give them the manual, I'd email it to them. And then school board members, they all got a copy of the manual for school boards. And it's a good practice once in a while, if you see a lot of new school board members coming onto your school board, to take some time with your board chair or with the whole board and go through some of the things, not the whole thing, but maybe a little bit each each month of this school board manual and reminding the school board how we're supposed to be operating, how we're supposed to set up subcommittees, how we're supposed to manage. Um, it's just a good practice to get those resources into uh, their hands so that you guys can all be functioning on the same page. You'll, you'll function a lot more efficient and a lot more uh, hmm, happily, if that's a word, if you guys have this understanding of how your school board's going to work, how it's supposed to work, and clear understanding of relationships and boundaries of the principal, of the board chair, of the board members, and confidentiality and all these things. This manual is great, and I highly recommend it if you have not gotten it. And if you've not gotten it to your board chair members, you need to.